What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev. I'm here with Tree, who's going to be helping do my first video editing PC build. So in this one, I'm about to put together my first video editing PC build. I'm going with the Ryzen 7 3700X. For my processor, I read pretty much online that this works better with Premiere and After Effects and that's what I'm going to be using. Obviously, you guys can go with like an Intel processor or whatever, but if you're going to be doing video editing and specifically using Adobe products from what I read online is pretty much why I ended up going with the 3700X. So we got the ASUS, I think is how you say it, motherboard X570. Um, so it has internal Wi-Fi, which I know is like a big deal with the motherboard and everything. Uh, your motherboard has to be compatible with your CPU. So yeah, when you guys are doing your own build, make sure that you definitely read up on that. Then I got this new uh, GeForce uh, 3060 Ti from my graphics card. Um, I didn't even know that this was uh, gonna end up being the graphics card that I got. Originally, I was gonna get like a 2000 series, but when I got to Micro Center, this had just came out like a couple weeks ago. So uh, end up getting this one from what I hear is gonna be a really, really powerful card for again, all the, the really heavy editing stuff, especially 4K stuff that I wanna do. And then a for my power supply, a 750 watt uh, power supply, um, yeah, by G-Skill. And then for my memory, just got the one terabyte SSD. I also got the Corsair 32 gigs of RAM with the RGB lights. So hopefully it looks cool. My box is down there. So I'll show y'all that later. It's still in the box. I haven't even opened it yet, but it's a NZXT uh, tower case or whatever. So yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. Hopefully by the end of this video tonight, we will have a working fresh PC. All right, here we go. This is the motherboard right now. We're about to go ahead and start working on it. So we got this, this little piece right here, this little square part is where we're about to start working on putting this bad baby right here. So here we have the actual CPU, uh, the Ryzen 3700X. So this is what we're about to go ahead and install right here on the motherboard. So, so you might not be able to see it, but there's this little white triangle right here on the bottom left hand corner and we want that little triangle we want to match that up to the triangle that's on the corner of the board um which i believe is right here actually uh yeah So if you can see that, so that is our CPU. Go ahead and push that down, lock that in place. And now our CPU should be done. Like I was saying, just match up that little triangle, that little white triangle in the bottom left hand corner with the triangle on the motherboard. And then just pull that little lever down right there and then that should be in the game. The problem is this guy, which is the cooler that goes to the CPU, and I don't know how that goes on. So yeah, so now it's a matter of figuring out how that goes on to here. All right, yep, so we're stuck on the cooler installation. Um, so time to hop on YouTube. Finally got the cooler installed on top of the CPU, which is down here. So now I need to try to plug this cord with these four pins. Uh, this goes to the CPU. I need to try to plug this in 
somewhere here on the board where it's supposed to actually say um it's like one of, i want to say it's going to be one of these pins right here one of these set of four pins so we can see that you brought you guys probably can't see it but up here we can see that it says cpu fan so we can match that up to the board and we can see that it goes right here so i'm gonna connect these four pins right here to the cpu fan Oh, boom. Okay. So now that should be all for the CPU. You gotta screw this little guy into the motherboard right underneath the SSD, which we already got installed. So I'll show y'all that in just a second. Let me go ahead and get this screwed in. Right, now as y'all can see i have the ssd installed right here plugged in right there that little screw i was just telling y'all about is popped in right there and now i need to get this down like that and then screw in a little piece right here to actually hold this ssd in place like that and then we'll be all done with the m.2 ssd part All right, and then once we get that screwed in right there, you guys can see that we are now done installing the SSD. All right, so now we're moving on to the RAM, which is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, 32 gigs of RAM. So I have two 16 gig sticks right here. So now I'm getting ready to unbox this and uh, we'll go ahead and install this into our motherboard right here. Okay. We got the NZXT box. It's time to get into this, open this bad boy up, and start putting some stuff into the case. Now, as y'all can see, we have the box laying down and Look on the inside here. Uh, I don't know how well y'all can see all this, but we have like, we have some different screw points in here. Um, I know that the motherboard needs to go in over here. I need to put that, uh, I need to put this guy uh, down here, which is for like dust on the ports um, on the motherboard. So I need to put that in there first and then I need to figure out how the motherboard exactly goes in here. All right, and now with the little port, like dust catcher uh, into the case, now we should be able to go ahead and put the motherboard in and be able to like fit it up to these, these ports right here. And then we know that we'll be good. Then we can start moving on with the power supply and then wire management. Camera just died, but we just set the motherboard inside the case. So as you guys can see over here, you can see that all of our ports and everything are lined up properly to that dust uh, case that we put right here. So that's how we know that it's, it's in there properly or at least lined up the right way. And so now we have these, we have these screws here, 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 there, 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 and there, and there. So we're gonna screw all this in now and then we'll be all set with the motherboard. Now all we need to do then is add the 
graphics card, which is over there in the power supply. And then we can start our wire management on the case and then we'll be all set. Now we're getting ready to install the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti graphics card. So in order to do that, we are going to need to remove a couple of these panels right here, these top two. So we'll go ahead and get started with removing those. Let's see what we got in here. The graphics card. We got some, okay, we got some instructions. And here we go. Okay. Open her up. Wow. Here we go. So like this is exactly where I think we're gonna be putting the, the graphics card, how that pops down and then we're gonna put it right in there. All right, that took me a while, but I finally got the graphics card installed right here. So big tip on installing the graphics card, do not do this with the, the case laying down. Um, definitely have your case upright like this and then that way you can actually see the back part where you're gonna insert the chip. And yeah, that way you can just easily make sure it's lined up and just press it in there and make sure that it's good and lock it in there. All right guys, so next up is gonna be the power supply. Um, again, uh, I got the 750 watt power supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Right, boom, more directions. Okay, cool. So all my cables and <laughs> all my cables and cords are right here. Um, and then, boom, we got the power supply. So as you guys can see, uh, this power supply is fully modular. There's no cords attached to it at all. And all the cords are right here inside this little case. So um, semi-modular would mean that like some of the cords would be on here and then some of the other cords could be moved around and then uh, I think there's other ones where like you can't move any of the cords at all and then you have to kind of just wire manage around just the cords as they are on the power supply but in this case we're using fully modularized so we're gonna have a power supply unit with no cords and then we have a bunch of cords separately and we just add the ones that we need to the power supply so I'm about to probably speed this part up right here while I try to figure out uh, where these cords even go on the power supply. Okay, so on the power supply, we can see up here, we can see motherboard. Uh, might be a little dark. We can see motherboard right here. And we can see all these different pins that we have. So it's like 20 different pins. So over here with my connectors and my cords, I can see that there's this one this one cable only that has 20 pins that match that. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into uh, the motherboard part here for the power supply. All right, so as y'all can see now, we got the power supply screwed in, locked in place here. So now we're good to go, got that in there. So we got all these cords right here that we now need to manage, do some cable management. Let's plug a bunch of stuff into over here. Oh, that's really dark, but yeah. So now we're about to just plug some stuff in uh, over here in this section with those, those wires. And then we'll be ready to test this thing out. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll go ahead and hit the switch on the power supply. 
Okay, we got some lights going on. We got some light action going on in here. I think that is, huh? I don't know, I got the LED panel right there. So we got the actual power button here, which. Oh! Oh! We are in action, as you guys can see. Um, I went and grabbed a uh, Microsoft. As you guys can see, I had to go grab a Microsoft Office uh, USB drive where I could actually install Windows on the operating system. But as you guys see, here's the PC right here. Um, we're looking good. So while my operating system is installing, I want to tell you guys that one of the most challenging parts of this build was literally getting the operating system part on there. Um, if you guys go online, you're trying to get Windows 10 or just a Windows operating system. You're going to see a lot of articles about using the Microsoft creation tool and literally I think it's trash. These are all the different hard drives. I don't know if you guys can see these, but two, four, there's four different hard drives. There's more than this, but these are just the ones. And you can see that I use different brands. These are both SanDisk. This is a, a Micro Center. This is a Micro Center brand. Well, I know you guys can't see this because the lighting's bad, but Micro Center brand. These are both SanDisk. And this one is uh, by a brand called PNY. And I tried all of these with the Microsoft creation tool to actually download an image of Windows 10 onto these to make it a bootable drive that I could just plug into the computer, pop it in, and actually get Windows like I'm doing right now. But none of these were able to be found. Like when I had these plugged into my computer, the computer would find these devices and everything was fine, but then the Microsoft creation tool would not find any of these devices on my computer and I couldn't actually create an image. So I made like three trips to Walmart, I put, I tried to use different brands uh, from what I was reading online of USB drives. I bought USB 3, uh, I bought USB 2s, and literally none of them worked. No matter which brand I used, uh, maybe it was just my computer. I know, obviously, I'm sure the tool works for other people, but, uh, but yeah, I had a terrible time getting Microsoft Windows 10 on any of these using the creation tool. So, I, my solution was to actually just go buy uh, uh, actual USB stick of uh, the Windows 10 download. Uh, so this is kind of like how the case looks and stuff. But uh, it'll come with your little card right here and then this will have like your, your actual product key on it and everything. But I actually just went to Micro Center and actually bought a USB drive that actually is from Microsoft that has Windows 10 on it. Popped it into my uh, computer, which is behind me right now, and that's how you guys saw the Windows 10 operating system like loading onto the computer just then. So I highly, highly recommend that you guys, if you're gonna get a Windows operating system, just buy it directly from Microsoft. Just grab the Windows 10 USB flash drive. You can get them on Amazon, Micro Center, Best Buy, maybe even Walmart. But just make sure you guys get an actual like copy of Windows 10 from Microsoft. It costed me 140 bucks, but at the same time, you know that you're getting an actual fresh copy of Windows 10, and then you're gonna also get a, a fresh activation key or product key, whatever you wanna call it, and then that way you have access to your license and there's no no worries about it being pirated or anything like that. So if you guys learned anything new, or if you got any questions for me, leave it down in the description box below. I'll be sure to make follow-up videos showing you guys how the PC is working over time when I get into doing more stuff with it. Uh, so yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Darian with Darian Dev. I'll see you guys next one, all right?